Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to another first reviews reaction video with your big boy buddy Gore and I just heard that there's some reviews for The Continental, which of course is the new John Wick um, prequel series happening on, uh, series, mini series, three episodes, uh, that's uh, I think on Peacock, I want to say, which I do not have, which really sucks, because that's another one I have to buy. I still need to get Hulu again, because I need to continue Futurama. Uh, I need to get Paramount Plus, which I might actually have, so I can watch TMNT. I might have Paramount Plus. And I have to get Peacock now to watch this freaking Continental show. There's, there's too many. There's too, uh, there's, there's too many freaking streaming services. Anyway, so reviews start coming out. I figured we'd do a quick first reviews for it, because... Um, I don't know why, I just thought, uh, let's do a quick one. Let's just do a quick one, we don't, we don't need to go on too long. So, uh, I'm gonna guess, I really don't even know what to guess. Um, I'm gonna say, at least, a, like, from what I saw, it didn't look as good as John Wick, but it looked like it could be a lot of fun. I'm gonna guess around the 70 range, 75%, I'll just say, straight up. Uh, I don't know how many reviews there are, I, I saw a couple reviews pop up, uh, I didn't read what they said, I immediately went, eh, and then started this video. So, uh, I'm assuming there's enough reviews but maybe there isn't that's also kind of why i want to just get right to it so let's just get to it because there might not be enough reviews and i have to end this video anyway let's go 75 percent. that was my guess uh okay uh, oh there it is i see it uh should we do we should do this let's do this i think this is better seeing the big score the continent wait did i misspell it there yeah there it is from the world of john wick all right let's see let's go Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh. All right. Oh, no. Really? Okay. All right. Three episodes. Yeah. Oh, it went up a little bit. There we go. All right. 6.1 out of 10. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Wait, all three episodes are coming out on uh, uh, Friday? Oh, shit. I didn't know that. I thought it was going to be uh, one a week. Okay, a three-part prequel that gives franchise fans everything they want for a charismatic marquee lead. Uh, interesting and exciting bloodshed of characters and lore worth paying attention to for an extended period of time. Wait, what? That gives franchise fans everything they want. Oh, save for a charismatic marquee lead. Okay, save. Interesting and exciting bloodshed or characters and lore worth paying. Okay, so. So it gives you everything you want except everything you want. Okay. Cool. I get you now. Uh, the continent... So, wait. That, that means... I thought the guy that was playing uh, Winston looked pretty good. I mean, he doesn't look anything like fucking Ian McShane, but whatever. Um, all right. Well, that sucks. Uh, the Continental seems to exist on the assumption that John Wick fans will gobble up anything even tangential, tangentially related to the adventures of a man who just loved his dog. His wife, really. But, yeah. Dog. An oddly watchable beast, it is nowhere near... Oddly watchable? I don't know. It is nowhere near as inspired or slick as its feature film source material, but the fabulously expensive looking series does give the people what they want. Lots and lots of random goons getting shot in the head at close range. Well, that sounds good to me. Even with Mel Gibson involved, it's not bad enough to hurt the John Wick franchise. What? I guess Mel Gibson is a lot of movies. Now, bad movies nowadays. I don't know. I know people don't like Mel Gibson, obviously, for the things he said, but as an actor, he's pretty solid, so... It's not bad enough to hurt the John Wick franchise, but it's also not exciting enough to justify becoming a key part of the canon. Yeah. For those who are willing to suspend their disbelief and go with the flow of this fun, pulpy adventure, that's that's one thing I, I, I want to say about it, uh, John Wick. I mostly agree with a lot of people that critique, like, you know, like, the Disney stuff, and, and because a lot of it's, like, badly written, and, and, like, it's just there for fan service, but, like, I, I see a lot of people criticize the John Wick movies for just being nonsense, and th this is the thing, like, when I watch the John Wick movies, except for the first one, I watch them for the nonsense, I, I want, I want to, I want to see John Wick get hit by four cars in a row, I don't care, I really don't, I, I like it, I want to see these stunts, I want to see the action, and I want to see the, the weird lore, and all these weird, interesting looking characters, like, that's what I want to see, and that's what I like, and I understand if some people are a little annoyed that, like, the first John Wick is pretty, like, it's pretty realistic, especially compared to the fucking two, three, and especially three and four, um, because those go, those go, those go nuts. Um, two does also, like he gets hit by a car almost instantly in the first one, and he's fine. But um, right, yeah, that sounds right, right, yeah. Um, but this is the thing, like I, I like 
those movies like it's the same way like i enjoy like commando and the same like commando is fucking ridiculous but i like it in that same way where like we have an indestructible hero he goes around he doesn't get hurt really unless the movie needs him to get hurt for what a, a particular reason like it's not like an amazingly written series uh, I enjoy those movies for that reason. And I see some people like criticize it because of like the magical bulletproof uh, coats and stuff, which, which when it comes to like the Mandalorian, I understand why people get upset about it for that, you know, because like they're trying to build some tension and then, Oh, well, every time anything happens to Mando, he gets shot right in his armor and his armor is like completely impervious to almost any damage. I, a fucking sun could explode and, and the Man Mando would be fine. Um, but like in the John Wick movies, those, the action scenes are so well done that like, you don't even really, I, I don't even think about like, oh, he's just not, he can't die. You know? Um, I don't think about it all. Cause it like, it doesn't matter in, in, in the, yes, like it, in, I don't know it, it, I like them, but whatever I get, it. I really like those movies. I really, really like those movies. Um, Spirit of John Wick and the choreographed fights remains intact. I hope so. Satisfying three nights stay at a luxurious four star lodging, stunning views, and accommodating staff and amenities to die for. Now under new management. <laughs> for those who are willing to suspend it, I don't care. I can't remember that. Uh, it's clear that the John Wick movies are better than the Continental, but this still remains an, an estim est estimable. Ah, fuck this. Uh, it's good enough. Oh, here's Grace Randolph. Uh oh. While this three. While this three nights. <laughs> While this three night event did convince me that the John Wick franchise can exist beyond Keanu Reeves, he gave it a rotten review. This is the totally wrong direction. A very slow pace and lack of fight scenes in a John Wick show make this a slog until episode three, which delivers. I mean, I, I can't argue with her. If that's the case, then that kind of sounds kind of lame. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um,. Because the John Wick movies know how to pace out their fight scenes for sure. Like, it's good enough. But if John Wick, John, if it's John Wick and you're looking for Keanu Reeves and St uh, Chad Stahelski must have taken all the magic with them because they sure didn't leave it at the Continental. Oh no, uh, it's a shame. It really is a shame. Uh, all right, damn. I was really expecting like just a fun. Like it's not gonna be as good as the John Wick movies, but I was expecting it to be a little bit better than this. Uh. I want to see who else is in it. That's why I came back. Uh, okay. Ah. Uh. Ooh. Anyway, so there. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. Pretty short, but uh, well, oh, I guess we, we should probably maybe take a look. All right, fine. Fine. We'll take a look at Metacritic. Even though I hate using Metacritic nowadays, so. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay, thank you. There you go. And look, they put Cyberpunk on the front now. Thank you. 54, okay. That's about what I would have thought after. Like, when it comes to Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic scores, sometimes they align. But most of the time, they, they don't. Which makes sense, because Metacritic is way more picky with their reviews. Like, look, how many reviews were there? There was like 30-something. How many are here? 17 so there's less here because they're pickier when it comes to picking who they put there um that's why that's why i really do believe it, it like the, like even though this is fun to to look at and react to um that's why I, I try to read the reviews at least the blurbs um because like the scores don't mean anything like i've said it many times you can have a movie that has a hundred percent on Rotten tomatoes with a hundred reviews and the movie itself is a six out of ten like if everybody gave it a three out of five or a six out of ten and they consider that a fresh review because it's above an average technically like average would be five or two and a half out of five um technically that means like they it's more positive than negative right so it'd be a, you know like most people would consider that a fresh so um but even like a seven, a seven out of ten is a good score. That's a that's definitely above average. That's a, that's what I would consider good. Seven's good. Eight is great. Nine is fantastic. Ten is just like like amazing, phenomenal. Um, and then six is above average, and five is average. Four is below average. Three is bad. Two is awful. One is what the fuck, and zero is like you can't even be a zero. But like sometimes you got to give a zero. <laughs> sometimes you got to give a zero when a movie just pisses you off. Um, I don't know what game I would give a zero or a movie, I guess, in, or a show, I guess, in this context. 
Uh, look at this. Even like smaller releases this year have been good. Like Dune, that Dune, Ad Infinitum is okay. Wandering Sword. This game looked kind of cool. It looked like Octopath a little bit. Um, and it got decent reviews. Uh, yeah, I, I even started this game because I, I, I got it recently. Oh, okay. Oh, it's probably the Switch version. Yeah, there you go. Um, and it's a nice low, it's a good vibes, this, this game right here. Uh, anyway, this is supposed to be a short review, so we're, we're done. Bye!